Yo, what's going on guys, it's Houston Sports Hub back in another video today, and today the Boston Celtics beat the Miami Heat in game four of the first round. Boston takes a 3-1 lead in this series and could close this series out tomorrow in Boston and move on to the second round. And if they move on to the second round, they will face the winner of the series with the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers play tonight at, I think it's like 6 or 6.30. Uh, you know what, I I think the game starts at 7.30. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. But uh, they will play the winner of that series, which is tied at two games apiece right now. So the Game 5 is a critical game in this series for the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Orlando Magic. Um, and that Game 5 is a critical game for the series we were talking about currently in the Boston Celtics uh, and Miami Heat. As uh, I know the Boston Celtics nearly came back from a 3-0 lead, uh, you know, last season against uh, the Miami Heat. And they were almost the first team to, you know, out of 154 times to potentially come back from a 0-3 deficit they didn't do it. I mean, well, now it's 155 because the Lakers, the Lakers, um, the Lakers, well, I th actually won 156 because the Pelicans got swept last night. The Lakers lost 3 1. So it, now Owen 156. And the Celtics are the closest team to ever, you know, to ever almost do it. I don't see the Miami Heat winning three games in a row against this. Boston Celtics team even if they were healthy with Jimmy Butler and Terry Rozier I don't see it happening and those two guys not being healthy is a big reason why I say Miami can't do it but I mean at the same time Boston's going to be without Kristaps Porzingis this in game five maybe that is a potential I, I could see Ma Miami if they play their best basketball, they need to, I think they need to shoot the ball the way they shot in game two. But if they can do that in Boston, I could see them taking a game five. Uh, yeah, game five. And, you know, getting the series down to only one game, only being down one game. But you're going to have to play some good basketball to beat Boston, even without poor things this in game five. You're without. You're going to be without Yami Yasquez Jr., uh, Terry Rozier, and Jimmy Butler. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So Yami Haskins Jr. did get hurt in this game. He scored nine points, twenty-two minutes. He's not going to play in Game Five. Chris Porzingis just played fourteen minutes with seven points and three rebounds. He had a tough injury in this game that's going to keep him out. Game Five. Terry Rozier and Jimmy Butler have been out this whole series, so you know, nothing's changing with those two guys. Uh, so yeah, but you know, honestly, outside of Derek White, Boston played terrible in this game. They, they didn't play good. Their two stars, Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown, didn't play good. They shot a combined 12 for 32. Boston didn't play good. Um, and, you know, Boston, again, played good defense in this game like they did in, in game um, in game three, right? Yeah, game three. And, but in that game, they were also, you know, they were, they were knocking down shots. They were playing really good basketball offensively. They were not doing that in this game. Miami, they could have taken advantage in this game and easily got this win. They easily could have got this win if they played better basketball, but they didn't because they played terrible basketball. They, they, I think they took too many three-pointers. They were rushing their shots. They were taking terrible threes as well. They shot nine for 33. A lot of those were terrible shots. I mean, just terrible. A lot of deep shots as well. Like, why are you shooting that? I think the only guys that should have green lights to, you know, shoot, just keep shooting the ball on this team, I would say is Tyler Hero, who shot two for six from three tonight. Um, maybe you could take Caleb Martin, but not from deep, deep. Four for eight from three in this game. So he shot good from three. He had 18 points. Um, so, I mean, I'm, what I just have to say about things is that Miami did not, you know, they did not shoot the ball well tonight. They did not do a good job offensively. And they started to play better basketball and started to change things around in the fourth quarters, outscoring Boston 21 to 29 in that fourth quarter if they could have played the whole way the way they did in the fourth quarter they would have beat the crap out of boston in this game and that's just out of my honest opinion they only scored 12 points in the second quarter that's unacceptable and the thing is is you're only putting 12 points in the you know putting up 12 points in the second quarter you think boston's going crazy offensively 
Boston only put up 19 points in that second quarter. Boston was terrible in the second and fourth quarters of this ball game, only scoring 40 points. Um, and then they put up 28 in the third, which is good or solid. First, they they had a really good first quarter, putting up 34 points. But I think the second quarter, if you go back and you look at it, that was your chance to take advantage in this ball game. Uh, if you if you could have put up potentially 20, 22, 20, 20, 22 to twenty five points in that in that fourth quarter. Um, this game is a, sorry in that second quarter. This game is a lot closer, and they took a lot of terrible shots in this game, in my opinion. And they looked terrible offensively, uh, but at the same time, so did Boston. But yeah, all right. So, but Derek White was the savior in this game for Boston. Without him, I think Miami probably wins this ball game in a terrible, terrible low scoring game. Thirty eight points for Derek White. He shot eight for fifteen from three, fifteen for twenty six shooting. He had twenty plus in the first half. Derek White was going crazy in the first half and he carried it over to the second half, just not as good. But that was it he had he had a career high uh in the playoffs in the first quarter which was like 16 or 15 points something like that. So he went he went you know double over over double his his career high in the playoffs. Um so yeah, 20 points for Tatum, 11 rebounds, 5 assists. Not that's a good stat line, but Tatum was shooting terrible. He shot 5 for 14 and 2 for 6 from 3 and 8 of those 20 points came from the free throw line. Porzingis was good, but shot 1 for 5 and he only played 14 minutes. Drew Holiday was good with 11 points and 6 assists and 6 rebounds. Derek White, we don't need to talk about him. I already talked about him, but he was fantastic. Jalen Brown, 17 points, 5 rebounds, 2 steals, 2 assists. Another good stat line, but terrible shooting night. 7 for 18, 1 for 3 from 3, 2 for 4 at the free throw line. And then off the bench, Boston only had 9 points off the bench. They Their bench has been producing in this series. Guys like Sam Hauser and Pritchard have been good in this series. Al Horford has been good, which he was good in this game tonight. Uh, so, yeah, their bench has been... Their bench in last night's game was not as good as it's been in this series. Sam Hauser, zero points, three rebounds. Al Horford had seven points and eight rebounds. But his minutes did go up because of Porzingis' injury. Uh, so, I mean, that's when you look at the minutes he was playing, that's not really impressive. 34 minutes, shot seven, you know, seven points, eight rebounds, three for five. I mean, it's good. He wasn't bad, but he played a lot of minutes, which he's, you know, he, he, he's been putting up those kind of numbers in shortened minutes. So, you know, th- those are the numbers he's been kind of around. He went a little bit above his numbers this series with way more minutes. And then Pritchard had zero points. Luke Cornett had two points points in three minutes so you know two of their nine bench points was off of a player who only played three minutes of the ball game so their their bench was not producing like it's been in this series all right um for the heat 25 points for bam Adebayo, 17 rebounds 11 for 22 one for three from three 19 points for tyler hero with four assists and four rebounds 18 points for caleb martin he was really the only heat player that shot good from three tonight or get last night four for eight from three five rebounds three points points for Nikola Jovic. I don't know why Spolcher started stop playing Jovic. 16 minutes. He did shoot 1 for 4, 1 for 4 from 3. But if you want to knock down threes, if you want to knock down threes, you shoot 9 for 33. You're taking too many threes. You're missing a lot of threes. Jovic is a guy who's can is going to knock down some threes for you instead of, you know, keep forcing shots. I mean, Patty Mills, 1 for 4. Haywood Highsmith, 0 for 3. Robinson, 0 for 1. Kevin Love, 0 for 2. Haskes Jr., 0 for 2. Hero, 2 for 6. Bam, 1 for 3. Jovic, 1 for 4. Uh, which is, you know, I mean, he could have knocked some threes down for you if you wanted to, you know, potentially continue shooting threes. He wanted to cut that lead down. I don't know why uh, he did not play Jovic more in this game when he has played good all series and potentially would have found his shot later in this game. Uh, and that really is, that's really it for the starters for Miami. Yaskes had nine points in 22 minutes. Uh, just like the Celtics bench, the Heat bench wasn't much better. I mean, they were better, but not much. Nine points for Patty Mills. He outsc- almost outscored the whole Celtics bench. Two points for DeLon Wright, who played 29 minutes with four rebounds, was not available in game three. Three points for Haywood Highsmith. That was it for this Heat bench. So they outscore the Celtics bench by five points, 14 to nine. So. 
neither bench is really producing. And, and you do have guys that are playing good amount of minutes. Pritchard, 18. Hauser, 16. Horford, 34. Then for the Heat, 22 for Patty Mills, who had 9 points. So he definitely took advantage of it. Uh, DeLon Wright, 29 minutes. Um, also, Haywood Highsmith, 19. Guys who didn't play for the Miami Heat, they, they've been without Josh Richardson, a, a guy who has been a part of their team. And he had a shoulder surgery. Um, Terry Rozier has been out. Orlando Robinson and Thomas Bryant, DNPs. Jimmy Butler is out with his injury. So, yeah. They they're they're definitely an injured team, but I mean, Celtics are now without Chris Porzingis as well. So if you lose this next game, I don't think you can really make excuses with how big Chris Porzingis is for that team. But maybe Miami can go into Boston and steal a game five and potentially take this series to six games. Look, last year Boston had a three one lead against the Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta. Uh, Went into Boston, got a Game 5 win, sent this ser- sent that series to six games. Boston did close the series out in six games. But last year, what I'm trying to say is last year, Boston was not able to close out the fir- their first round series uh, against the Hawks at home in Game 5. So maybe the same thing without Porzingis happens again against the Miami Heat. Just saying. Let me know your thoughts and peace out.